Now, if you're new to Formula One, or perhaps you're an old fan that's been in the wilderness and you're returning, there's some information that you need to know when you go to the pub. It's all about the pub chatter, isn't it? We're going to talk about tyres first. Gary, six different types of tyres. Yes, this is the wet tyre, blue sidewall, very deep tread here. This is meant to pump the water away from the surface to allow these bits of the rubber here to get to the tarmac to give some grip. We go to the intermediate tyre. It's a green sidewall. Again, less tread, less, less water pumping, but more rubber to go onto the road. So when the track's drying, this is the tyre to be on. But when it gets dry, then you've got this selection of, hard, of, of slick tyres. This orange sidewall, it's the hard tyre. Used at circuits like Monza or Spa, you know, whenever the, the corner loads are very high, whenever the cars are really putting forces into the tyre, you need to have a very hard compound. Medium tyre is the white sidewall. The yellow tyre is the soft tread. Again, much more grip from the me mechanical grip from the tyre. And when you get to a circuit like Monaco, the red sidewall. This is a super soft tyre. So this is the one you want whenever you've got really low speed corners, you need a lot of traction. So four slicks, and the really, really simple way of remembering them, and we all did this to start with, was the breakfast rule. So you've got your orange juice to start with, then you've got your bread that's white, you've got your butter that's yellow, and you've got your jam to finish off. And if you come and have a look down at this, if you just zoom in for us, you can see a barcode. They're all individually coded, so they can be sent in and out, because there's a specific allocation for each team, isn't there? Yeah, there is. And, and really, whenever the tyres are allocated from Pirelli, they call the, the harder the tyres called the prime and the softer the tyres called the option. Now, for P1, you've got six sets of the prime tyre and five sets of the option tyre available to you. That's it. Each driver has the same for the whole weekend. When P1 is finished, one set of the harder tyres is taken away. So you're left for P2, you start with five sets of hard, five sets of soft. And then at the end of P2, one set of each is taken away, leaving four and four for P3. At the end of P3, another set of each is taken away. So for Q1, you've got three sets of the harder tyre, three sets of the softer tyre. That has to do with complete qualifying sessions, all three of them, and the race. So yeah. you have to look after the tyres, and that barcode means that the stewards and scrutineers know which tyres you've got in the car at which time. And for the top ten, whichever tyre they qualify on, of course, is the tyre that they have to start the race on, unless it rains, and then, of course, it changes. The other term that you'll hear us use a lot of is DRS, Drag Reduction System, and effectively that was uh, an, an overtaking aid that was introduced in 2010, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was try to try allow cars that were quicker than other cars to get, to get past. Basically, unless you're about two seconds faster, it's almost impossible. So you needed something to just give you that little bit to get past another car. DRS was to replace what was called the F-duck. The F-duck was something that the driver made the rear wing stall as such and made the car go faster in a straight line. But he was moving his hands off the steering wheel and closing off ducks. So it was becoming a, a bit, bit dangerous. dangerous. So they invented DRS. Let's have a look at it in action then. You can just talk us through these pictures of how it works. We see here the Ferrari and the Lotus coming around to turn 15 in Malaysia onto the back straight. Now, Massa, he goes across this white line. He's allowed to use the DRS after this point. He presses the button and you can see the closing speed on the Lotus. Passes him without any problem whatsoever. Up the straight, into the last corner. You can see the rear wing there is open now. Mm. And just a minute or two later, hits the brake pedal, the rear wing closes. So basically going into the corner, that gives him extra rear grip. It's like you and me both sitting on the rear wing, the extra downforce. But around the last corner of Malaysia... I'm not sure I would make that much difference on the downforce, well, Gary, but yeah, I, I come on. I promise you I would. <laughs> but around the last corner of Malaysia, then Raikkonen and the Lotus is close enough to Massa for him to use the DRS on the way down the main straight. But he doesn't really have the, the speed of the Ferrari, so he can't come back at the Ferrari. He can't get past the Ferrari again. So, yes, it's a good idea. It helps with this sort of situation where you've got a faster car trapped. And the other term that you'll hear us talking about a lot of is KERS, the Kinetic Energy Recovery System, which effectively is a boost button for the driver, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's basically a boost button that works in an electric motor that puts more energy into the engine. It's worth 80 horsepower for six seconds a lap, so it's quite a big benefit whenever you try to overtake someone. And if we look at the same clip again, we'll see that they, when the, the Ferrari comes around behind the Lotus, as soon as Massa gets out of that corner, he can press that button, give him that extra 80 horsepower. That helps the car accelerate. So whenever he's, he's going faster, even before he uses the DRS. So again, Massa had some, uh, had some cures left, Reikkonen had none, so it helped with that overtaking manoeuvre. Now as they go around the last corner, both of them have used all of their cures energy pack up. And we'll see, just when they go across the start-finish line, it resets itself every lap. And there again, both now have the full pack. Massa's pressing his button again, using a little bit of it, just to make sure that uh, Reikkonen doesn't get past him. So, you know, it's, it's all about doing all these things. The driver's not only turning the steering wheel, he's 
They do a lot of other work as well. Yeah, a lot to think about, but it's made for some really fantastic racing, lots of overtaking. You know, it really has helped that, hasn't it? Yes, it has helped it. And it's helped it in a, in a situation where, as I say, you know, whenever a car is half a second faster than another car, it's impossible to pass. This has given the opportunity for that to happen. You know, maybe it's artificial a little bit, but in reality, the quick guys still get to the front. Okay, so you've got your curves, you've got your DRS, and you've got your tyres.